Archaeology is a popular subject on our channel. You love learning about it, and we love talking about it. Fortunately, because it's a fast-moving field of science and research, there's always something new to talk about. The world's archaeologists have made some incredible discoveries in recent times, and we've been picking through the best of them so we can bring you the most outstanding stories. Here they are now, all together in this video. Even objects as humble as shoes can become an archaeological mystery if they turn up in the wrong place. These particular shoes were found deliberately hidden in a cavity behind the mud brick walls of an ancient temple in Luxor, Egypt, where they'd been placed in a jar for safekeeping. The footwear is so well preserved that it's still supple and flexible, but the mystery is the fact that they appear to be non-Egyptian in design and may have been made abroad. Sandals were the standard choice of footwear in Egypt 2,000 years ago. So shoes like this would have been a status symbol that identified their owner as someone with wealth and taste. Two pairs of children's shoes were discovered inside the jar tied together using string, then placed inside a much larger adult shoe. Their design is consistent with the style that was popular in medieval Europe, but they were created much earlier. Someone went to great effort to hide their unusual footwear, but obviously never got the chance to go back and retrieve it. We'll probably never find out why they did this or where they got their fancy footwear from. In August 2020, archaeologists inspected a winding staircase inside a castle in Casis, Latvia. The area containing the staircase had been inaccessible for many years, and apparently it had never been studied properly in the time before it became inaccessible. If anyone had taken a good look at it, we'd have found these strange ancient inscriptions on its stone walls long before now. The inscriptions carved into the castle's south tower walls were probably made during the 16th century. It's possible that the person who made the carvings was only partially literate, as the text is a strange mix of German and Latin. The text had faded badly over the centuries, but parts of the Latin can still be translated. It reads, If God is for us, who can stand against us? That's a quotation from the Apostle Paul in the Bible found within his letter to the Romans. The castle was subjected to a siege by forces of Ivan the Terrible in 1577 during the Livonian War, so it's possible that the inscription might come from that event. Speaking of strange markings on walls, what do you make of these ancient petroglyphs in Sego Canyon, Utah, USA? These pictures taken in September 2020 show what appear to be humanoid figures, but we wouldn't describe them as human. They have horns or antlers, and in most cases have incomplete sets of limbs. Experts believe that the oldest of the petroglyphs here were created around 8,000 years ago, with the more recent ones being around 4,000 years old. Some scientists believe that the paintings were drawn by shamans and spiritual leaders, possibly while under the influence of hallucinogenics. Those who are more prone to believe in conspiracy theories claim them as evidence of aliens visiting the human race in ancient times. A third school of thought says that their depictions of Kachinas, beings described by the Hopi tribe of Native Americans who were said to own flying machines and came from a planet beyond the reaches of our solar system. Are any of these theories correct, or might the petroglyphs be nothing more than ancient examples of abstract art? Archaeologists in England had cause for celebration in October 2019 when a colossal hoard of Bronze Age treasure was found in East London on the banks of the famous River Thames. The collection of 453 ancient artifacts buried 3,000 years ago was found during construction work and is the third largest Bronze Age discovery in the United Kingdom's history. The whole collection, which includes jewelry, spears, swords, axes, and daggers, appears to have been buried together deliberately, perhaps as an offering to the gods. Copper ingots were also found at the site, backing up the offering theory. The site is being developed for gravel extraction, but archaeologists were invited to inspect the site before any further work was done. And it's a good job they were there. There's an alternative theory about their origin, though. Rather than the hoard being an offering, it's possible that a blacksmith or weapon shop once stood on this site. The owners of the facility might have buried their goods to guard against theft, 
and then never got the chance to come back and dig them up one day. This treasure trove is now known as the Havering Hoard and went on public display at the Museum of London in early 2020. Stonehenge is the most famous ancient circle structure in Europe, but it's far from the only one. Structures similar to Stonehenge were sometimes made from wood rather than stone, as evidenced by the discovery of a series of ancient timber circles in Portugal in August 2020. The remains of a circle 66 feet in diameter have been found at the Pertigos Archaeological Complex, but they might only be the beginning of the discovery. The experts believe that only one-third of the site has been excavated so far, and there might be a lot more to come. The timber circle was probably made about 4,500 years ago, with an opening at one end that roughly aligns with the summer solstice. This supports the existing theory that most, if not all, sites like this were used as a sort of calendar, and were probably a focal point for ritual activity. The presence of pottery fragments and ancient remains close to the holes that once hosted the timber posts implies that sacrifices might have been carried out here too. As is the case with Stonehenge, though, we'll probably never know for sure. Turkey's Black Sea coast has been explored extensively by archaeologists in the past, but in September 2020, we found out that those archaeologists had somehow missed something very important and exciting a whole Neolithic settlement in Kahain Tep. The lack of ceramics at the site is unusual and raises the possibility that this ancient settlement was founded and occupied by people who enjoyed hunting, practiced a form of religion, and made charming statues of animals, but either didn't care for or couldn't make pottery. The settlement has been dated to the Aceramic Neolithic period, which means it could be up to 12,000 years old. That would place it in the same period as Gobekli Tepe. Similarities between some of the discoveries made here and the discoveries made at the more famous site imply that it might have even been made by the same tribe or the same group of people. Grinding stones and ornaments have been found in this area before, but somehow the settlement's existence had been overlooked. That's obviously no longer the case, and archaeologists are hoping to make even grander discoveries at the site in the near future. Two teenagers helping out at an archaeological dig in Israel ended up embarrassing the professional archaeologists working there in the summer of 2020 when they unearthed a collection of hundreds of gold coins in a clay jar. Oz Cohen and his friend were digging into the ground at a site in Yavne to pass the time when they made their discovery, and are now responsible for one of the most astonishing ancient Israeli coin discoveries in recent history. The coins are over 1,000 years old and were minted during the time of the Asabid Caliphate. Each and every coin is made from 24 karat gold and may have been someone's life savings. Experts at the Israeli Antiquities Authority say that the value of the coins would have been sufficient for someone in the 9th century to buy a very large home and live comfortably for their entire lives. Gold coins are found less often than silver or bronze coins because gold tends to be melted down and remolded for alternative purposes once the coins are out of circulation. But the fact is that this jar was buried deep below the ground, saved them from that fate. Now they're destined for a new life as a museum exhibit. You have to feel a little bit sorry for this hell ant, which was found in Myanmar in August 2020. Just as it closed in on its prey, an ancient ancestor of the cockroach, it became trapped in amber and has stayed that way for 99 million years denied its final meal moments before it got its mandibles around it securely. The finding is important to researchers for two reasons. Firstly, it gives them a rare opportunity to study this species of ant, which is known as a Heidemir messing, and became extinct more than 65 million years ago. The second is that it demonstrates exactly how the ant trapped its prey, using its scything mandibles to pin its unfortunate victim up against the horns on the top of its head. The first hell ant was discovered a little over a century ago, and the reason that they're so distinctly different from the ants that exist in the world today is unknown. While the path from the cockroach in the amber fragment to many modern era cockroaches species is easy to draw, the ant remains an enigma. Having said that, based on its nickname and its violent tendencies, perhaps that isn't such a bad thing. 
Not all ancient shipwrecks keep their treasure aboard when they go down, but every once in a while marine archaeologists find one that has. And the one that turned up off the coast of Sicily in March 2020 is especially exciting. When the ship went down around 2,600 years ago, it shed its cargo of ingots all over the seafloor. And those ingots have been proven to be made of oracalcum. This extremely rare cast metal was said by Plato to be made in only one place in the world, the lost city of Atlantis. Many experts have spent centuries searching for Atlantis and found nothing. But could this ship have been there before it met its fate? If so, does it offer a clue as to the location of Atlantis? 39 ingots were found at first, but further investigations identified a further 47 nearby. The wreck was found not far from Gela in Sicily, which might be telling. The Gela of 2,600 years ago was a wealthy city known for its production of fine, ornate objects, so the orichalcum was most likely headed for its factories. Until the discovery of the ingots, it had been suggested that Plato had been mistaken about seeing it, and the material was nothing but a myth. Now we know better. Plato said that only solid gold was considered to be more valuable than orichalcum during his lifetime. We wonder what kind of value experts will put on it today. Most of us know what an armadillo looks like, but the armadillos that exist today are comparatively small and harmless creatures that wouldn't pose a risk to human life. We can't say the same about the armadillos of 20,000 years ago. Thanks to a discovery made close to Buenos Aires in Argentina in February 2020, we now know that these ancient armadillos, known as glyptodons, grew to the size of a large family car. These heavily armored creatures existed during the Earth's Pleistocene epoch, but have been preserved to present day after being caught up in the basin of a dried out riverbed. It wasn't an expert who found them, but a farmer, Juan de Dios, who was escorting his cows to graze on a nearby field when he noticed the large mound-like shapes in the riverbed and concluded they weren't the remains of cows or horses. So he alerted the authorities, and archaeologist Pablo Messinio was the first qualified expert to arrive at the scene and identify the creatures. Extracting them from the ground won't be an easy process, though. Each of the glyptodons weighs in excess of one ton. Was there a connection between ancient Bali and the ancient Roman Empire? We asked that question because of the discovery of an enormous gold hoard in Southeast Asia in February 22, featuring jewelry and golden items made in the Roman style, but crafted from gold that was mined in Bali. The find might serve as evidence for a previously unknown trade route. The collection is mostly made up of grave goods taken from the Iron Age architectural site of Peng Kung Park, barely a mile from the northern coast of central Bali. Most of the objects are between 1900 and 2100 years old and point to a trans-Asiatic trade network that connected South Asia to China, and in turn the ancient Roman Empire. As well as all the gold, archaeologists have also discovered Roman glass beads and Chinese bronze mirrors at the site, seemingly confirming that Bali was accepting visitors from far and wide. The beads might be from Roman-era Egypt, adding another wrinkle to the tale, as similar discoveries have also been made in Vietnam, historians now wonder whether Bali and South Vietnam might have had a trade link through Borneo, as well as the well-established one through the Thai Malay Peninsula. The world of ancient commerce was clearly much more complicated than we thought. The King John Royal Charter isn't technically a new discovery. It's just been lost for a very long time and has only recently been rediscovered. The charter was created during the first year of King John's reign in England, signed and dated March 25th in the year 1200. While its existence was known about through references made in other texts, the charter itself wasn't thought to have survived to present day until a historian from the country's University of Bristol located it in Durham in March 2019, almost exactly 819 years since it was last known to have been seen. The document is understood to have been among the archives of Durham's Usha College Library, but the library didn't know they had it in their collection until Dr. Benjamin Pohl tracked it down and made them aware. The content of the charter isn't especially fascinating, as it serves only to confirm the granting of land and possessions, including two small villages in County Durham, to the Lord of Warkworth and to the Sheriff of Norfolk. 
Even so, so few documents from this era have survived to present day that any insight we can gain from them is valuable. At least we now know who was in the New King's good books. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.